Hi everyone, it's Syl and this is Slow Easy English. Um, in my last two videos, I explained the difference between uh, proverbs and idioms, and I explained the difference between, what was it, <laughs> metaphors and similes. Now, um, these can be a little bit confusing. I, I think if you watch those videos, you'll understand the difference between an idiom and a proverb uh, pretty clearly, and the difference between a metaphor and a simile pretty clearly. Um, but sometimes some of them can get confusing, and uh, I thought I should do uh, one more video um, putting them all together um, plus one more. Um, to kind of uh, compare and contrast them all together in one place. <clears throat> okay, so uh, if you haven't watched those other two videos, please go and watch them now. Uh, they're in the playlist, um, English Lessons, I believe. Uh, so uh, go check those out and then come back here uh, for kind of a recap and uh, comparison of how they are all a little different. Okay, so first on the list is a simile. Okay, so a simile is when we make a comparison between two things. Okay, uh, for example, he runs like the wind. Okay, so I'm using the wind, which is uh, often very fast. Um, so I'm using the word wind to describe how fast he runs. This means he runs very fast. He runs like the wind. But because I'm using the word like, this is a simile. Okay? That's what a simile is. Um, a metaphor. A metaphor is when we do not use a word such as like, um, but we actually take um, something, the word for something, um, and we put that in place or we, we take that to describe something um, without comparing it. Okay, so for example, his apartment is a pigsty. His apartment is a pigsty. Maybe you can imagine what that means. It means that his apartment is very, very dirty or messy. It's a pigsty. Um, now, here you can. Probably, uh, most of the time, you can guess what it means. If I say, he runs like the wind, it's easy to understand that he runs very fast. That's what it means. If I say, um, I don't know, uh, he, you know, she swims like a dolphin, <laughs> or she swims like a fish, then you understand that uh, she swims very, very well. In a metaphor, um, if I use a different word to describe something, then uh, without using the word like. So I'm not making a comparison. I'm actually using that word to describe it. Okay? Uh, I'm using the word pigsty to describe his apartment. Instead of saying his apartment is dirty, his apartment is a pigsty. It's a, you know, it adds a little bit more to the sentence than just plain old, uh, his apartment is dirty. Um, so in this case, we have a, a metaphor, but again, you can guess what I mean, right? You know that this means dirty, probably. Um, if my metaphor was good, then you know what it means. Um, so in these two, in similes and in metaphors, uh, the meaning is obvious. You don't need, usually, you don't need to look in a dictionary to understand the sentence. It's clear. However, with an idiom, um, with an idiom, you might need to look in a dictionary, or mm, usually you will need to look in a dictionary uh, to find out what it means. Uh, there are times when maybe you don't need to look in a dictionary, but most of the time, the words used, okay, an idiom is when we use more than one word, two or three words. Um, together that create a different meaning than those individual words. So, for example, 
<clears throat> if I say, he has a short fuse. Well, what does that mean? If you have never heard this before, you might have a lot of trouble imagining what that means. Now, here, it's kind of a metaphor, though. If you know what a fuse is, a fuse is that piece of string that is on, uh, used with bombs, right? And if that piece of string is very, very short, then it means that it does not take very long before the bomb explodes. So we say this about people who have um, a temper and they have a short temper and they get angry very quickly. So someone who gets angry very quickly has a short fuse. Okay. Now, is this an idiom or is it a metaphor? Well, sometimes it's difficult to know exactly which. For a native speaker, um, I think that with a little bit of context, um, with a little bit of context, even if I had never heard this before, I might easily guess what is meant. Um, however, however, if I have no context at all, and it's my first time hearing this, I can't be sure what it means. So, I would probably classify this more as an idiom than a metaphor, but I can also kind of imagine it to be a metaphor as well, a little bit, you know, it's like a metaphor. I just use a simile. <laughs> anyway, actually I didn't. Um, but uh, the second example is more of a pure idiom. Um, I bent over backwards to help you get a job here. So for example, let's say that my friend needed a job and asked me, said, hey, Sil, can I get a job where you work? Sure, let me see what I can do. And I go and I talk to my boss and my boss says, oh, we don't need anybody else. And I really try very hard. I put a lot of effort into helping my friend get a job where I work. So if I put in a lot of effort and it takes a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of my time and, um, you know, I do a lot. I worked hard to help my friend get a job with me at, at my company. Then I can say I bent over backwards to help, you know, get you a job here, uh, to help you get a job here either way. Um, so to bend over backwards for someone means to make a very big effort um, to help them or to do something. Okay. Um, here, you know, I didn't actually bend over backwards. I didn't do that. Um, so it's not literal. You know, it's not a literal thing. Um, here, if this was my first time hearing it, again, because I'm a native speaker, um, if I have some context, I might understand what it means. Um, but if there's no context, just, you know, I bent over backwards for him. Uh, if this was my first time hearing it, I would think, oh, kinky. Um, <laughs> look that one up in the dictionary too. Um, yeah, so, so this is also an idiom. Um, it's not easy to really guess the meaning. And there's other, oh, there goes my phone. Okay, sorry. Um, so there are other idioms which are much more difficult to imagine uh, the actual real meaning as well. And that's what an idiom basically is. When you have two or three words together that you look at the words and you go, okay, I understand what these words mean, but it's completely unrelated to the story. This means something completely different. That's an idiom. A proverb, okay, a proverb um, is a saying that is commonly used, uh, normally has some sort of wisdom or moral lesson in it, and, um, you know, kind of a life lesson type of thing. 
and uh, usually it's an entire sentence, okay? An idiom is not the entire sentence, it's just bend over backwards, that's part of the sentence. Um, a short fuse, that's also part of the sentence. A metaphor is the type of sentence. Um, a proverb is a sentence, uh, like I said, a sentence which, uh, or a saying, um, which has some sort of deeper philosophical meaning to it, and it is commonly used. Many people know these proverbs, and many people repeat these proverbs. So, for example, birds of a feather flock together. Uh, this may be uh, a little difficult to imagine what it means. What's the lesson here um, if you have never heard it before? Well, what it means is that uh, similar people, birds of a feather, meaning birds with the same, birds that look the same, of the same species, um, they flock together, so they hang out together, which means that, uh, let's say for example, let me give you an example, um, I, if I had children, I might say, hey, you know, your friend David, uh, you know, he drinks, right, and yet you're only 15, um, I don't really like you hanging out with people who drink, be like, oh, come on, Dad, not a big deal. I don't drink, you know, it's just, I know he, he drank a couple of times, but I won't do it, trust me. Well, in my head, I might be thinking, well, you know, birds of a feather flock together, meaning that people who are typically friends have similarities, and that uh, if he has friends who drink, probably he's drinking too. Uh, not necessarily, of course, but... Uh, that's what this proverb means, is that uh, people who are friends and who spend time together typically have things in common and share a lot of similarities. Expression. This is one that I didn't have in my other two videos. Um, a, a proverb is fairly easy to identify, an idiom is easy to identify, a metaphor is a specific type of, of uh, sentence, uh, simile is also a specific type of sentence. Now, these sentences may be common, you know, using the word pigsty or the expression pigsty um, might be common, but you can create new metaphors very easily. They're not the same thing always. A proverb is a saying that has been around for many, many years probably, handed down through the generations. Um, idioms are also accepted and uh, com you know, universally understood uh, expressions or sayings. Now, here I'm just separating this as just an expression because it doesn't really fit in any of the other places here. For example, um, a common expression or a common saying, they're all sayings, really, okay? And you might even say that they're all expressions of a sort. Um, the definition of saying and expression um, can be a little bit tricky and difficult to define. Uh, so you might hear me call these sayings or call them expressions, but here, I'm separating what is just an expression as different from all the rest. Um, the first one, there's no such thing as a free lunch. Okay. Now, it could be a proverb, I suppose, um, because there is some wisdom in that. It means that if someone offers you something for free and you feel like, oh, that's great, I'm getting something free, and they don't want anything in return. I don't have to, I just get it for free, great. Um, but then, of course, after you get something for free, the other person does ask you to do a favor in return or something like that. Then you might say to this person who naively accepted the free gift, and say, well, there's no such thing as a free lunch. You know, so you have to be careful. The meaning here is be careful when somebody offers you something free 
because there's no such thing as a free lunch. Um, so is it just an expression, just something that people say commonly, or is it a proverb? I don't know. Um, I don't feel that it's deep enough to be a proverb, but maybe it is. Um, I could, I would probably put this under proverb if I had to choose, um, but I could also just call it an expression. I'll, I'll put another example here. Now this is not a proverb, it's not an idiom, it's not really a metaphor, and it's not really a simile. Um, and this is what I have. I don't know if you can read this. It's hot enough to fry an egg on the sidewalk. Now this is not really a metaphor. Metaphor is a little different. Um, so what is it? It's not a proverb, it's not a metaphor, it's not a simile, it's not an idiom. What is it? It's an expression, or a saying, or a figure of speech. That's another term that we use. Um, obviously, there's nobody who is outside frying eggs on the sidewalk, you know, and maybe a little bit of bacon. Nobody's doing that. Um, it's just an expression. It's just a manner of speaking to say, it is really, really, really hot outside. So, uh, it's hot enough to fry an egg on the sidewalk. Um, you can say this, try using it yourself. Uh, it's a very natural expression. Uh, we don't use it every day, but every once in a while I hear it. And, um, and like I said, it doesn't really fit in these other categories. At least, I don't think it does. So, um, so I just, I call it just an expression, okay? Um, but like I said, they're all really expressions or sayings. And so uh, if you want to be specific as to what type of saying it is, you can call it a proverb, an idiom, a metaphor, or a simile. But uh, you could just call any of these things expressions or sayings. It's just a saying. It's just an expression. Or, you know, there's a saying that says blah, 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 blah. Okay. So, anyway, uh, hopefully I haven't confused you. <laughs> and if I have, I'm sorry. And if I haven't, if you have learned something and you enjoyed this video, uh, great. Uh, hopefully you will click the like button for me. And uh, also, please share the video, share my channel with your friends, your family, um, on YouTube, on Facebook, on Twitter, on what else? On your car. Write that down on your car. Slow, easy English. No, don't do that. I'm joking. Um, I won't pay you for it if you do. You can if you want to, though. If you really want to. Anyway, <laughs> it's time for me to go. We are at 18 minutes now. So, thank you very much for watching. And uh, excuse my silliness there at the end. Um, yeah, thanks for, thanks for watching. I will talk to you again soon. Bye.